Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolina. And for those of you that don't know, I live and travel in my van, this van, which is a 1994 Dodge Ram Class B. If you saw my video from last week, you will know that I asked you to ask me questions for a new series that I'm starting called Cool Cat Confessions, which will be every Sunday. I, you ask me questions and I'll answer them. First, I wanna start with a few questions that I get asked frequently, if not every single video. First one is, where am I from? Originally, I, am, I was born in Venezuela. I was born in Caracas, Venezuela, and I lived there till I was 10. We moved to the United States when I was 10. I didn't know how to speak English, so English is my second language. I have lived in the United States ever since I became a US citizen shortly after what year was that it was shortly after law school I lived in florida for a good portion of my life and then i moved i've lived in other states uh, in the midwest texas and a couple of other places i have traveled and lived around the world for shorter periods of time I spent a month in england and i spent a couple months in italy i've lived in a number of places the next question that i get asked all the time is why are you single i am not always single <laughs> but that's by choice so i happen to be single at the moment but i'm not always single okay jacobs vlogs asks what do you call your van and i think you're asking me if what i named my van i have a 1994 Dodge Ram Class B camper van. So that's what my van is. But if you, your question says, what is it called? So if you're asking me what the name of my van is, I don't have a name. Those of you that have been following me for a while know that I started my journey first in my Toyota Corolla. And then I bought a little teardrop that I pulled behind with my Corolla. And I named that Square Bear. But you know, I haven't named the van. If you guys want to help me name the van, when I was at Vid, uh, not VidCon, Playlist Live, I was talking to Louie about naming my van and we were talking about that. So maybe that can be something we can, we can do if you guys want to help me name the van. I don't know why I've, I haven't named it. The next question comes from French from 97.4 and they ask, why do you not have an email? I do have an email. If you're interested in emailing me about something, why don't you leave me a comment down below and let me know that you're interested in emailing me. What I don't do is I don't provide my email or contact information if you don't have a way where I can identify you. So if you have an avatar that doesn't have a picture and you have a obscure name, and you don't have any other social media that you can refer me to so I can see who you are and who I'm giving my information to, I typically will not answer and will not give you my information. It's just something that I do for safety reasons. Because I am on the road and I am single and traveling alone, it is just wiser for me to do it that way. I found also that the people that are professionals and that truly have an interest in either contacting me about a service that they have or a product they want to sell or for me to endorse or a business opportunity those are usually pretty open in their disclosure of who they are and where they can be found and their legit website or phone number or information on social media so I can identify who they are. So if you're interested in contacting me, just make sure that I can identify who you are in social media and I'll be happy to give you my contact information. The next few questions come from Sweet Beep, Richie and Richard and they all ask about my back and want to know how I manage back pain and if I have tried physical therapy and if I have tried medicinal cannabis. So I have been managing my back pain by uh, stretching and doing different exercises. I have gone to physical therapy for a long time. I went for about a year before I had my surgery 
and surgery was the last recourse. I think that EPRA could probably benefit from continued physical therapy, but the cost is just prohibitive. There's nothing in physical therapy that I can't do on my own. I just have to be disciplined about it. I have had prior surgery. I had a surgery, a rotator. I tore my rotator and I actually, I am at 100%, you can't. Normally, let's see if I can show you my scar. Did you guys see that scar? So I tore my rotator, it was a full tear and I had to have rotator surgery and that was the most painful thing I've ever been through in my life ever. After surgery, you're, you have to, you can't move your arm and I was in a sling for a while and that physical therapy and being able to get my arm at 100% movement again was like I said, the heart, the most painful and the hardest thing I've ever done. Well, one of the hardest things I've ever done. But I think that with my back, that's the same. I have not tried medicinal cannabis and I am not interested in it. I don't like smoke or smoking. I'm not going to say I don't like it. It's, I drink, so I obviously put you know things in my body that aren't good for me i like beer and i like wine and i like a good cocktail once in a while but i don't really enjoy marijuana and i don't like the smoke or feeling or smell of smoke so i just don't think that's something that i would enjoy or that or that would help me so no i haven't tried that the one thing that i am doing is i am looking into i recently actually last week i went to my general practitioner my family doctor he told me that pain is psychological and we got into this whole discussion about physical pain and neurology and psychology and i am doing more research and before i talk more about that i want to read up a little bit more on it and i'm actually just downloaded some um audible books so if you have audible that's a really good resource to get information so i'm going to be listening to those here because if you travel i get to listen to the books i love to read but i because i'm driving i don't get that downtime as much and then when i'm down somewhere i want to be out doing activities so i don't get to read as much as i like but I'm gonna be listening to those audible books on the psychology of pain and the connection between the brain and the particularly back pain with spinal injuries. Next question is, is asked by Renaissance Marine TV and Renaissance Marine TV asks, where do you derive your income? And I made a video on that about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago. So it's outdated, although some of it still applies. I'll link it either up here somewhere or down below in the comments. Yeah, I have a lot of different sources of income. I have a lot of education. I have an AA in criminal justice, and then I have a Bachelor of Arts in English history with a minor in education. I got licensed to teach, certified and licensed to teach secondary education, and I went to law school. After that, I've started several businesses. So my income comes from a number of places, and I'm going to do a more in-depth video up to update the last video that I did. But to answer your question, every source of income provides different amounts each month or each season of the year. I have a concierge business, which I provide uh, concierge services to vacation and tourist areas around the country and around the world. And that I provide anywhere from helping them book their vacation, whether it's a fly fishing or scuba diving or in the Florida Keys, or maybe you want to go skiing in Colorado or you want to go to Paris. Another way I derive my income is I am, have been a tour manager for recording artists. I'm not a booking agent. I go on, I actually go on tour with musicians and work as their tour manager, which involves a variety of things. It involves working with their booking agent, with the venues. I review their agreements and then work with their attorneys, uh, their marketing reps, if they have one. 
I also have run the social media for their accounts. Some musicians have personal needs, business needs, uh, tax documentation, uh, payment documentation, bank documentation. So I do a number of things as a tour manager. Another way that I provide income for myself is as a casting crew member in television, film, short films, and theater productions. So I've done everything from PA, which is a production assistant, to an assistant director. I've had small roles in productions that I've been involved with. I usually don't make videos or publicize any of those because a lot of production companies, oops, a lot of those gigs require that I sign in non-disclosures and some of them even include no social media clauses. So even if they don't, I usually don't unless they've specifically, they specifically state that you are permitted to disclose what project you're working on in social media. If it's not in my agreement, then I don't, I don't do it. I don't disclose it. I have a lot of old projects that I've worked on that I could, at this point in time, go ahead and disclose some of those. So I may do that in a future video, but it's just not something I do. If, if it's a job that's been within the last, I don't know, two, three years, I don't include them in my social media. I'm an independent contractor and I help people get their own businesses off the ground I help you become an independent contractor meaning whatever you want to do you don't have to work a nine-to-five and any and it's just a consulting business where I help you figure out whether a corporation is in your best interest a limited liability company should you meet with a CPA with an attorney and we go through all those questions work through all the details of what you may or may not need in your business and then I put you in touch with the resources. So I don't provide legal advice. I don't provide financial advice. I provide information that you will need to start your own business to help you get away from the nine to five and be able to quit your job. If you wanna know more about that, you can ask me questions below. Just write it down in the comments and I'll try to do a more detailed video on that. I do is I tutor and babysit kids so I can do that anywhere in the country. A lot of my work comes from word of mouth but I also sign up through different organizations or websites. Another source of income for me is having roommates. Even if you don't own your own home, if you want a fixed location that can be your home base and you still want to travel but you want a place that you call your home base you can rent out the rooms in your apartment or in your house to help you provide payment for the bills some people don't like living with other people don't some people don't like living with strangers i've been doing it for a long time so i don't mind uh, it gets it gets on my nerves sometimes and sometimes I go through periods where I don't have any roommates especially if I'm gonna be around for a month or so and I just don't want to be around people that is another way that I can provide for myself that's all the questions I had if you have any more questions or want me to answer your questions next week leave them down in the comments below I look forward to chatting with you again next Sunday Hello.